Hello guys, Khaled Wakaoli here. I hope you all like me are staying safe and staying home for the most part. As you can see, this is basically still, you know, quarantine content. But anyway, as a follow-up to my Camo 15 premiere unboxing and review video, which you guys can watch here or in the description part of this video, this is the Camo 15 premiere camera test. And of course, I am drinking tea because why not? So given the situation of things, I can't really go out to locations to shoot proper images like I would love to. So I've just gone around my environment for a bit and taking some images and hopefully these images are useful in helping you, you know, see the camera potentials of the Camon 15 Premiere. First thing I would like to point out is the 64 megapixel camera. Now this is not a setting that is automatically on by default but when you do put it on, it is required to hold the phone really steady. I would actually recommend you using a tripod if you can because really what is going on here is that the camera is trying to gather as much details, data and information as possible. And as you can see, it really works. You can definitely see the amount of details in these photos. Check out this photo here without the crop and check it out again after I cropped it in post just into the antenna. Although shooting a 64 megapixel photo does mean a huge file size. I ended up with file sizes as huge as 27 megabytes. In this example which I shot directly into the sun, this would have been an underexposed image or an overexposed image. But the 64 megapixel camera still held up nicely, giving me just enough details in the highlights and in the shadows. Now if I'm to go on and edit this image, I'll probably still come out with a nice detailed image. Now moving on from the 64 megapixel to the normal mode, which I believe this is where most of us are going to be shooting on a day-to-day -day basis, we have the 1x which is the normal viewing angle, a 2 times zoom and then a wide angle. Just pretty similar to what we have on the predecessor Camon 12 Pro. Again, the 1x is obviously where we have the most details. You can see the image start falling apart in the 2 times shot and in the wide angle. But even so, I think they are still pretty much a good option to have. Here I did some comparison with the Camon 12 Pro and one thing I have always disliked about the Camon 12 Pro is the oversaturation and you know too much contrast that is going on. But I think that is something that has been fixed on the Camon 15 Premiere. This might not seem like a big difference to you but if you're like me who is into photography then you probably would see why that is important. It generally pays to have like a little flout out images so when you move on to the editing room you have more room to play in the editing room i don't know if you guys understand but then if you're someone who's just looking to post directly straight out of camera to social media or wherever then i think the photos from the common 15 premiere are still pretty much good to go but again talking about editing here's an image before and after so by now if you're wondering if the Camon 15 premiere's camera is better than that of the predecessor Camon 12 pro then absolutely yes and moving on to the front camera, nothing serious other than the camera is now motorized. We have a pretty much standard 32 megapixel camera, and so far it is great. It's pretty much responsive whenever the camera um, detects a fall, like when you're trying to take a selfie and the camera detects a fall or something like that, it retracts immediately. So I think it's pretty well thought out. The mechanism are fluid, so I think they actually did a good job there. So for image quality, just really nothing new here, just pretty much the same thing with what we have on the Camon 12 Pro, including the overblown highlights, which is something techno phones just seem to continue to struggle with. The image you're currently looking at looks a lot better just because I try to get a good viewing angle just to avoid the overblown highlights. But again that is something with you know taking pictures generally on your mobile phone. We need to understand that this is this is a mid-range phone and just like most other phones out there you know they can be compared to you know the high-end smartphones or even the DSLR camera but the basic thing here is that you just have to try and understand the lighting situation of the place that you're in and then you just try to take advantage of that maybe move around a little bit to see where you get a better shot that's really basically you know the trick here now for low light pictures this is the part again where I really wish I could go out to do some real tests but so far the camera has performed well in my little test at home, especially on close-up objects. It is fairly sharp and it does well to separate the image from the background and if we have been realistic, this is pretty much good for, you know, a mid-range device. But generally, I wasn't expecting less on the low-light part because this is an area where Techno Mobile has really been pushing and so far, I think it is doing well, although I would not say I have done enough, you know, tests to say that it is amazing, but so far, I think it is, you know, doing well and we just, you know, just have to do more tests and see, you know, as it goes. If you had to ask me about the Camo 15 Premier's camera, I would say it's an upgrade from what used to be and a contender for king of mid-range cameras. And I am actually saying all this with fact. I mean, the colors are accurate, it packs a lot of details in the shots, 
the autofocus is good. The only thing really missing here would be a manual mode, which by now I think it is something Techno Mobile is just intentionally overlooking. But again, for most people, the manual settings wouldn't even be something that they care about. They just need the default or rather automatic settings to be good enough, and I think that is something Techno Mobile has focused on here. If we take a deeper look into the camera interface, nothing much has changed except the short video option which allows you to shoot a short video for 15 seconds or 1 minute. This I believe will be useful for Instagram posts but the downside here will be drop in quality compared to when you shoot an actual video which in this case would be up to a resolution of 1080. Here is what a 1080p video at 30 frames per second looks like. If you are interested in the video side of this device and would like to see a vlogging test, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. But until then, that is all for now. Don't forget to like and share this video. And of course, if it's your first time here, please consider subscribing to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.